Welcome back to Political Capital, the show where Delhi meets the large street. The rate cut debate is back. We're in conversation with Siddharth Birla of Fiki as well as Indranil Pan of Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, Siddharth, let me start with you. Uh, what's really the industry's view at this point? Because uh, one camp is beginning to argue that this is not a rate cut problem, that the animal spirit of India Inc. still remains curtailed despite the political mandate. Do you think a rate cut will help in getting growth back on track? Yes, I think uh, a rate cut uh, perhaps is being discussed for a long time, but I think the situation now and in the overall global sense that we need to revive investment, we need to revive the investment cycle sometime in 2015. And you know, when you talk of the animal spirits of business, uh, you know, animal spirits uh, will change very quickly once the growth uh, becomes more sustainable. We are looking at a revival of investment cycle in 2015 and I think it is very important to already signal uh, moderated uh, interest rates for that investment uh, revival to become a reality. Otherwise people will be in a wait and watch mode as to when uh, rates are going to cut because we've heard uh, for a long time that inflation must moderate before the rate uh, can be moderated and I believe that uh, interest has been, uh, inflation has been moderate. Uh, uh, moderated in the past months and uh, is perhaps now this uh, interest uh, inflation is uh, maintainable so i think a rate cut at this point of time needs to be signaled even if it uh, starts with small steps and continues into larger steps signal is exactly what the rbi is not giving we've heard from the deputy governors as well who continue to say that inflation remains too high but let's look at the yield chart and what that's starting to uh, to signal uh, the yields are back to the pre-Rajan era as it's called a 15 month low coming on the 10 year yield as well. Indranil, you've reworked some of your targets as well when it comes to that bond yield and your expectation of the rate trajectory as well. At Kotak, what are you expecting from the governor? Is it time to sort of loosen the hawkish tone a little bit? Uh, now, definitely we are not uh, looking at the governor to loosen his hawkish tone immediately in December. And uh, I think just to bring in perspective, relative pressure for the currency is also on the depreciation bias. Uh, now, the other thing, obviously, we know that, yes, there has been some uh, sort of implications in terms of the softer demand on the inflation. But a certain portion of the inflation is definitely due to the larger base effect of last year. And that is likely to reverse post-November. So when the inflation is actually again rising, uh, be it a base effect or not, uh, a central banker might not be willing to actually soften monetary policy in that sort of a condition. That's, that's number one. Now number two, even as we talk about a lot of the adjustments that have happened in the Indian economy, most of the adjustments that we see till now is still cyclical rather than structural. And therefore, the next uh, uh, fiscal's budget becomes that much uh, more important uh, in terms of the overall direction that we need to paint uh, from the uh, sort of fiscal stance and hence uh, the monetary stance has to react to that. So I think our best bet is that uh, the rate cut would probably start somewhere around April, uh, uh, hoping that uh, the currency behaves uh, till that point in time. And uh, the relative pressure for the U.S. Uh, to actually reverse its interest rate cycle doesn't become too strong. Uh, start coming on this because the pressure on the currency is something uh, that India Inc. is also watching very closely given the fact that overseas borrowing has picked up yet again uh, because of low cost of interest across the globe. Uh, Deleveraging is something we've not seen uh, from India Inc. as much as one would have liked uh, to get growth back on track. Uh, so, given the constraints on balance sheets, is cost of funding really the biggest problem India Inc. is facing right now? You see, what's already on the balance sheet, so let's not discuss that in a, because uh, the, the cash flows have been very poor, uh, you know, as, uh, as industry as a whole. Mm. Cash flows have been strained over the last two years. So, let's not uh, comment on the, just the balance sheet. I am talking of reviving the investment cycle and without, uh, I, I, let me give you the corner side of the coin. If the investment cycle does not revive, we are looking at supply side problems in coming years, uh, which uh, are going to just get us back to this uh, inflationary um, uh, situation that we have seen earlier. Mm. And I, I think we need to avoid that. So 
I, uh, when people are trying to plan investments, they have to look at how much money, the, you know, from the promoter's contribution, they'll have to put in their share of the uh, investment pie. But unless they can make sure that going ahead, uh, investment uh, returns are going to uh, match up to the interest rates, uh, you know, we will not see the investment come back. So deleveraging is something that could not have taken place uh, right away. Okay. Um, and because I think the profitability and the cash flows do not support uh, taking on uh, cheaper debt or, uh, you know, deleveraging your balance sheet. But I think, I think it's really necessary to get investment back on track. And I think for the future. I think that's the number one priority that all uh, you know FIIs and uh, uh, brokerages are also signaling. We're speaking to CLS this morning, and Chris Wood also saying that getting the investment cycle back is the single most important thing for for the investment uh, sort of sentiment to come back into India. Um, what are you making of uh, growth numbers now, Indranil? What are the numbers that you're working with? Because the first half has not been as encouraging, uh, but we knew that uh, growth will be gradual and uneven. But has the baseline trajectory uh, beginning to reinforce that we will go above 6% next year? And what kind of reforms will be critical to ensure that growth gets back on track? No, I think from a more uh, sort of macro perspective, if you really look at what I'm really seeing is to a certain extent, there's big joy that is happening in the financial segment. And uh, however, the joy is not uh, really transmitting itself to the real segment in the true sense of the term. And uh, the hope is that it will definitely transmit. But what is really happening is that from a deleveraging perspective, unless companies do deleverage, uh, the uh, scheduled commercial banks have already seen a sort of relative increases in their non-performing assets. And hence, from both sides, it would be a problem either to sort of uh, uh, take a loan or also to give a loan when the leverage in the system is, is relatively so high. So I think from a structural balancing perspective, the, uh, the uh, deleveraging needs to happen before we can actually see from a macro angle uh, investment demand coming back strongly. I think in terms of the investment demand also our perspective is that uh, the demand visibility is, is relatively quite low at this point in time, both at the domestic per per side as well as the global side, which will constrain uh, investments from private uh, entrepreneurs in the true sense of the term, which necessarily means that we have to really leave a lot of or the bulk of the investments channel to be opened up by the government. where. Unfortunately, there is a fiscal constraint. So looking at all these factors, I think growth will be difficult to come by uh, immediately. For this year, uh, this fiscal, we are still working with a 5.6. Okay. And for the next uh, fiscal, we are looking at a 6% at best in terms mm -hmm. of the growth cycle. And that's not bad, actually, given what the world is doing. Mr. Billa, it's quite incredible how fast this year has gone by. It just seems like yesterday we were talking about the budget that Mr. Jaitley has presented. And yet again, the pre-budget meetings have begun. From India Inc., what are the key reforms that you are looking at or hoping to hear? As, as uh, Indrid was also just mentioning, this budget takes even more importance than the last one. What are you hoping to hear from the, go from the government this time around? Well, I think the first thing, uh, we have to watch the winter session of parliament where the GST is uh, supposed to be placed. Mm -hmm. And uh, more important, I think, more than the budget, we are looking at... Uh, you know, the land issues being resolved also in this session of parliament. Uh, the labor uh, the labor law improvements have, uh, for Rajasthan at least, been passed. Now let us see what happens uh, across the country. I think uh, broadly, uh, you know, it's probably, uh, we've, we've submit our pre, uh, submitted our pre-budget memorandum uh, already to the government. But how, you know, we, we have to uh, take a hard look at the revenue side as to how to maintain the stability on the revenue side and to increase the revenues. Otherwise, if the government is not going to be able to spend uh, because of the fiscal constraints, that is going to be an added drag on the economy. So I think, uh, you know, we, we, we are looking today at a macro picture. Uh, maybe, in the, um, maybe by January we'll be looking at more micros. All right, we'll have to wait for the year turning to see if a lot of things turn around, be it the reform agenda or even the rate uh, trajectory. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me here on Political Capital and giving your insight on what's turning out to be a very heated debate between the government and what the RBI does next with rates. Thank you for watching.